The NHL's COVID problems continue, but in the meantime, we got the World Junior Championship. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back to the Locked On Red Wings podcast. I'm your host, Brian Fisher. With me today, as always, is my is the other host here, Scotty Bentley, also host at Locked On Tigers. And I uh, want to get this out of the way. Sorry we didn't get you guys that Christmas episode. Uh, we tried to have – we had a tight recording window that we just could not meet. Uh, life got in the way, and uh, I wanted to have my Christmas. So, <laughs> in the end, sorry, guys. Yeah. It's, you know, it was, it was a very eventful phone call when we decided we were going to, we were going to scrap it though. It was yeah. A pretty electric phone call. I was like, I think I got, I think I got too much going on. You're like, it's okay. I'm not even home yet. I'm like, oh, well that made it easy. <laughs> I was like, I'm stuck on the highway. Like trying to get home too. Like it's a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. We had plans. They fell through. And then we had a recording window. Those fell through and it just, it's like, oh, well it's Christmas too late. Move on. It's Christmas. Uh, anyways. Scotty, how was your Christmas? Don't have to dwell it on it good, for too man. long, but I want to ask. I want to know how you did. How it, it was good. You. It was good. Um, nice little, nice little day with, uh, with, with the fam, with, uh, with my dad. I got to see my grandma a little bit. Got a, got a sweet little Red Wings mug thing. Yeah, I saw you drinking that a second ago, right before we started recording. I wanted to ask yeah. you. Yeah, it's nice. I don't have just a clear plastic water bottle anymore, so that's nice. Yeah, it was nice. You? Uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. I mean, same thing. Family. Spent it with family. Uh, my girlfriend had this made for me. This Incredible. lockdown Red Wings mug. You sent me that picture, and that, that's that's how. So you... I like to fidget with things in my hands, so I'm sure I'll just be because I'm I'm afraid to use it. I'm yeah, genuinely right. afraid because it's these are like <laughs> heat pressed on. Her sister made it, so probably oh, wow. you know shout out to. Allison, my girlfriend, for getting this to me, but shout out to Melissa also for making it. Yeah, that's um, sick. I'm afraid to use it because I don't want to wash it and I don't want the letters to peel off. I used right. it one time and was like, okay, I've used it. Now it's now now it's a show prop. <laughs> it's a sweet show prop. It's a, it's a sweet show prop. Locked it on is. Red Wings mug. But yeah, it was a good Christmas overall uh, for us. Not so much for the Red Wings as more players have gone on COVID protocol across the NHL. Not even the Detroit Red Wings. Um, and the NHL is still trying to figure out their s- problems, their solution as they continue to push back the start restart of the NHL season. Uh, they pushed it back to the 28th now when it was on the 27th, which that whole one day is going to, you know, do a whole lot. But I think it's for extensive testing purposes is why they gave it an extra day. Uh, the Red Wings on Sunday, by the time you're listening to it, this is Monday. On Sunday, they added Lucas Raymond and Nick Letty to COVID protocols while taking off Michael Rasmussen and Robbie Fabry. So in the coming days, the Red Wings are going to get a lot of players back, but I'm sure they're going to get a lot of players on it as it goes on, as this, this continues to ravage NHL locker rooms. And while the NHL is making changes to the COVID protocol, as in to like create taxi squads, which they should have been doing the entire season because they knew COVID wasn't going to go away, and allowing the, you, the COVID, these taxi squad players have to have a salary under like a million dollars, it just it, it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough because the Red Wings only had 10 skaters at practice today. I just don't see this starting before the Winter Classic. Yeah, me neither. I mean, like we talked about that last week, right? How there, there was absolutely no chance that it was going to come back on time. Uh, they're just going to keep pushing it. They're just going to keep pushing it and pushing it until, one, uh, until either they change the policy or uh, until... I guess, in theory, until they they feel that uh, enough players are back from health and safety protocols to be able to play some games. But I mean, I, based on the based on the last couple of weeks, I'm I'm not really sure when that time would ever arrive. Well, and also, they're calling these players up from the AHL to put them on the taxi squad. So what's going to happen? is the these taxi squad players are not going to catch the COVID. They're going to get sent down to the AHL, and they're going to spread to the AHL team. It's just they're trying to come up solutions with as they go, but the, the fact of the matter is is COVID is just terrorizing the locker rooms. And when I say terrorizing, I mean, it's just spreading like crazy. A lot of these players are having very, you know, 
mild symptoms. And again, it's not just the Red Wings having these problems. It's every If you go to the front page of our hockey, if you're a Reddit user, I mean, it's every single article that's posted, the top top tweets or whatever that's posted are all so-and-so's entered COVID protocol. It's just a list going down. I mean, pretty soon the entire league is going to be on there. The taxi squad's not going to be enough. It just... And they just continue to push back one day at a time. This restart of the season. Now the Red Wings' first game is going to be the 28th just because of how the schedule falls against the Islanders. Just they're ripping the Band-Aid off real slow on this. Just say, screw it. We got to delay the season until at least at, at least the Winter Classic. You That'd be a great restart point to start fresh. You keep these players out of the rink. You keep them away from each other so they're not spreading it to one another. They come back, they get tested, they're negative, you can restart the season. But right now, they're all continuing to test positive. They're all going into COVID protocol. Even with a taxi squad, like, that's that's going to do what? Like, get you a, a few extra players, and it's going to be some really crappy hockey? I get you don't want to lose out on the money, but the logistics just aren't there to continue playing the hockey season right now. Yeah, and, and then you get into the, the like, nitty-gritty of it again. Like, you, you get further and further into the season, and then it – if then it, it to a point it's just going to become who like has the better AHL players because yeah. like so many people are just going to not be playing for such long periods of time that you're going to basically it's just going to come to a point where it's it's just who who has the best like replacement like level players and taxi squad players that are getting called up because I, this is a disaster i mean it's like a good and, and like that that's not news. The the whole world has really been a disaster for the last you know almost two years now. It's it's a complete train wreck. But I, I, I some something has to change clearly because in in its current state, this is clearly not working. Luke Wachowski, come on down, everyday NHLer. Right. Luke Wachowski, Dan Renouf, Kyle Criscullo. Don't Ryan don't Lashaw. slander Dan Renouf. Don't slander Dan. Listen, man, I'm just saying, these are the names you're looking at to be on the Red Wings roster. And, I mean, there are some teams, like the Red Wings are, and the Red Wings also don't want to start the clock on prospects that, you know, are going to be future NHLers. They're not going to call Jonathan Berger up. So you're going to only get AHL hockey players that they're not going to be afraid of, you know, either losing to waivers or just aren't, like, a future part of this team, a future asset. But that's why they called up Luke Glukowski earlier in the season. That's why they called Dan Renouf, because they don't want to use guys like Jonathan Bergen, who has really come alive down with the Griffins recently. And it's just, it's a messy situation, and the NHL is trying to fly by the seat of their pants and create a quick solution to get the teams back on the ice. And I get it. It's money. You're losing out on a ton of money right now, and I understand that that's a problem. But it's just, if you continue to go this way, you're just dragging the problem out across several weeks, if not months, when if you just put a hard pause on the season and get it under control now, there's a possibility that this isn't a problem in two weeks. You know, right. <laughs> just uh, well, I, then, I, I hate to sound like a broken record, but that's just the, that's the truth of the matter right now. For sure. And, that, and then you get into the, you know, there's been some some rumors and this is not something we need to go down this rabbit hole about. Like, I love rumors. My, my headphones are like not even. There we go. Um, <laughs> you look handsome. Don't worry about it. We, we don't need to. We don't need to go down like the you know into the depths of of this too terribly much. But you know, there's been rumblings of certain states uh, having you know after the holiday season is over, if COVID numbers continue to get higher, about mandates that may or not may or may not be put back into place as well. You know what I mean? So then, oh, like, man. okay, so now you're talking about not having like fans potentially or having a super limited capacity again to how it was kind of at the big, like at, at one point last season. Um, and, and then like, that's a whole new like caveat on this, right? Cause then you start talking about, okay, well how much money are we really going to be losing out on if it's at like 20% capacity or whatever, or just for straight up no capacity. I mean, Canada, has historically through this whole thing been much harsher harsher probably is not the right word much more yeah strict about their um the the like covid protocols just in their country not just in hockey so you know that's that's a what a quarter of the league a fifth of the league that that might have like no fans and i mean there's even been rumblings about michigan and again like that's that's a whole different conversation about like what we should or shouldn't do or what it will or won't happen 
um, as these numbers continue to go up. But uh, it's it's <laughs> it's gonna be uh, it's it's gonna be interesting to see how the NHL handles. It. And again, the NHL is just on the wrong side of the eight ball there with having so many teams in Canada and having to juggle two countries policies rather than, you know, like the NBA is just steamrolling through it with a bunch of G leaguers because they only have cat barber. Right. Right. Yeah. Stanley Johnson's back. And like, like he's hoping like Lance Stevenson played the other night, like just like crazy, crazy stuff, you know? So, uh, I I, I don't know. Right. Isaiah Thomas. Yeah. Like it'll, it'll be, so the the NHL again like doesn't doesn't have uh, or ha- has has to look a, a little bit closer at their policies because they gotta they gotta juggle two different places a lot more than everybody else. So we will we will see I guess. But it is uh, it is it is not not super fun times in the NHL <laughs> at the moment. That's an understatement. Uh, we'll get to the more fun stuff like the World Junior Championships that's going on. Uh, but first, I gotta talk to you guys about Built Bar. Uh, The holiday season is here. Christmas is gone, but New Year's Day is right around the corner. There's still plenty of time to get some Built Bar filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, but high in protein. You get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy with so many flavors to choose from. You'll have a hard time, well, choosing. Will you go with raspberry or mint brownie, cherry or double chocolate, cookies and cream, or peanut butter? Want to cozy up with something warm? Here's a holiday secret. Dip your Built Bar into a piping hot cup of cocoa. Let it melt and give your beverage a little bit of that Built Bar flavor. Plus, you'll have a nice melty Built Bar to go with it. But be sure to bring a couple of napkins because that, you know, melty Built Bar. I did that the other day. Chocolate. Really? You actually oh, did yeah. it? Oh, yeah. With it the was, Built it, Bar. It was incredible, too. Oh, man. Like, seriously. Like, it Like it, it was heat, man. I did it with a, with a chocolate one. It, I mean, it was... Did it make, the, did they, it make they, hot, hot, the cup of they, hot cocoa a little more chocolatey? It did. I mean, like you, you could tell. Like Bill Bars taste good, so like you, you could tell. Like when drinking it, you know, it had a little bit of that. But the the Bill Bar itself, too. I mean, it was like a, like a gooey. Like I don't know, man. The whole it, it was. I was a big fan. Like I, I understand why they put it in. Like why they tell us to tell y'all to do it. Because I was like, all right, screw it. Like I. My dad made hot cocoa the other day. I was like, let's just see what, what all the fuss is about. Like, why am I telling people to do this? It, they, they don't, they're not playing. They're not playing. So make sure you guys go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. All right, Scotty, let's transition now into the World Junior Championships. Um, before we can talk about our prospects, our boys, want to give a quick mention to the complete horse bleep as i censor myself um that is them canceling the women's tournament for the second straight year but deciding that it's okay for the men's tournament to continue yeah pretty ridiculous i mean pretty pretty, uh pretty ridiculous i read a real good tweet online and it said um where there's a will there's a way do you know that one yes i know (laughs) there's a will there's a way you never know, man. You don't know a whole lot of sayings. Um, Ridiculous. But <laughs> the, the joke or the saying there is like what they mean when they said that was there clearly isn't a will because there's definitely a way to make this women's tournament still happen uh, without just outright canceling it. But it's the second year in a row that they have outright canceled the women's tournament without even trying to like delay it find it at another time. And the, the, the reasoning is, is like the COVID spikes for every tournament that starts after January 1st, which is just conveniently the women's tournaments. It's just not going to happen. But because the men's tournament starts before January 1st, that one can play. And it's just horse crap because the real reason is that, you know, they can use that as a, an excuse all they want. But the real reason is they don't, pro- they probably don't see the women's tournament as a way to make money but how do you expect to grow the game when you're just canceling the women's tourna- tournament outright without suspending it, delaying it? Like I agree that COVID is surging right now. And if you're going to um, delay it, that's fine. But to outright cancel it for two years in a row without even trying is just unfair to these women hockey players who are trying to not just grow the game, but change the game and change how people view the game. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the it's, I mean, it's just hypocrisy, right? Like the, everybody talks about, you know, it's it's not a surprise to anybody. It's not new news that hockey culture is has has 
but thankfully been starting to shift and and in a needed shift, but also still has uh, quite a bit of a ways to go to get to a po- point where people are, I don't know, content. I guess might be the word. Um, and there's a lot of you know talk about including everybody and hockey's for everybody and stuff. And then, I mean, this is this is like pretty blatant. You know what I mean? Like it's not they they can say whatever they want. And they can try to cover it up, but it it's this is this is pretty blatant. <laughs> like like the, the they just made the cut off that day. Like oh, what a coincidence. You know what I mean? Like so it it, it f- fuels into a to a pretty pretty big problem, I would say, and then one that that has been thankfully openly talked about a lot more and is trying to be addressed at a lot bigger level, but then stuff like this happens literally today. And you're like, okay, well, maybe maybe we weren't taking the strides that we thought. Well, yeah, and people people talk about how, oh, well, it's because the women don't have a, a draw that the men do. And to a degree, that's true. But the point being is by canceling the IIHF tournament, you're it's very counterintuitive to the point of growing the game. This is where these, the, these women shine. This is where they can show... Uh, how good of hockey players they are, draw more fans to the game, inspire young other young women to play the game as well. So by canceling the tournament, which is one of the highest level turn- international hockey tournaments in the world for men and women, that it's just counterintuitive to trying to grow the game and trying to make it more of a draw. So you're, the IIHF is only hurting themselves in the long run by canceling this tournament for the second year in a row because it stunts the growth of women's hockey. They like This is representation that the women's hockey needs to be able to grow the game. If you want hockey as a whole to be successful, you need it to be successful with women. And you cannot, it just, it, it just does not work by canceling it two years in a row without trying to find an alternative. Right. And, and the, the magic ability to find alternative for the men and not find yeah. alternatives for the women is, Didn't is even pretty try. ridiculous. Yeah. They're, like, the, right. That's the biggest thing. There was, there wasn't even an attempt that was made. And, and, uh, that, <laughs> That, like there are ways around it. Like I'm sorry, there are, there are ways to to get both done. The, yeah, no, absolutely. The, this option of oh well, it just happens to be that with the way COVID is going, this is how it has to be. Like that, the fact that nobody thinks the reverse would ever happen is the problem. Exactly. I guess that's that's what it really comes down to. And hockey's ability is to shoot themselves in the foot. Is incredible, and like we talk oh, about, yeah. we talk remarkable. about the NHL all the time. The NHL, is, like you said, remarkable at it. But I mean, it, on Very an international impressive. level, like this is a game. This is a game that con- consistently, if I can speak, this is a game that consistently touts how they want to grow and how to make themselves competitive with the top grossing sports in the world, which is worldwide is soccer, and then nationally in America. And now this is IIHF, so it's not necessarily America, uh, North America doing this, but. In North America, you know, basketball, baseball, football. It wants to get on that level. It's number four in the four major sports. But by continuing to do things like this and pulling out of the Olympics, like it, you're just continuing to stunt and shoot yourself in the foot from the one thing that you long term is going to benefit you the most, which is growing the game, making it more popular, making it more accessible, making it more visible. I just I don't know. This is starting to get into a bigger topic overall, overall, uh, overall about the NHL's just inability to market itself. But I, I horrible I just, at marketing itself. When I, and, when I re- and ba- I mean baseball is the same way. Like that's that though the, those two sports are inept at at marketing themselves and their players and growing their their fan bases to to a wider audience they both are horrible at it and moves like this are reasons why and they continuously shoot themselves in the foot over and over and over again um uh, it's ridiculous yeah and uh frustration frustration is just the frustrating is the best word to use right now um but you know it's not frustrating BetOnline.ag because they have you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the college bowl season, if the college bowls even happen. 
and through pro football playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use their promo code Locked On to receive your bonus from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. Bet Online, where the game starts. Final segment, Locked On Red Wings podcast, Monday edition, as we continue to wait for the NHL season to continue. I guess in, in a certain aspect, Scotty, if the NHL were to pause, now would be a great time because World Junior Championships going on. We have stuff to talk about from there. And uh, now, not all the by the time we're recording this on Sunday evening, not all the games have been played because I can't afford to stay up until the end of that USA game because I have work in the morning. <laughs> so we're recording this after Sweden's finished. Uh, Canada is still on the ice. I believe it's the third period. But USA or not USA Red Wings fans are already eating good, Scotty. It's been just not, we've been treated to a just delight all night. Simon Edvinson with a goal and an assist. Theodore Niederbach with a goal. Uh, Donovan Sabrango with the with Team Canada has a goal. Just great night to be a Red Wings fan so far, and great night uh, to be a Red Wings fan in the future of this team. Yes, absolutely. No, it, it's. Uh... I mean, the World Juniors are just electric as oh, is, fun, right? So fun. Just just so fun. Um, and I I really think that, like, all sports should – football, I guess you really – that's just college football, I guess. But the, I think the other three should all seriously do that. Like, I, I, I think it's electric. I think it's awesome. Um, the fascinating part about looking at the lines and the rosters and stuff is always seeing – the the representation from the teams and the Red Wings. I mean, as we know, have a pretty pretty good representation in Eight uh, players. In, in Second most, one. yeah. Um, are 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 the Hurricanes the most? Yeah, ten players. Yeah, bro. I, I didn't even know that, but I could tell just because if you go through when they tweet out the lines, they do it. If you if you follow the right people on Twitter, Tony Ferrari, who is just on, is a, is a great one for this. But when they tweet out the lines. They'll tweet out like the logo of the NHL affiliate that they are uh, affiliated with. Yeah. with, right? So going through, like I'm going through and and looking, and you know, there's there's teams sprinkled all over the place, obviously, and it's super cool. There's like two to four Hurricanes <laughs> on every team, dog. It is whack. It's so whack. Um, but it's it's so fun. Obviously, it's more fun watching when you have, you know, when every game you have a stake in it. When you have a Red Wings player in there, and uh, they the the boys were showing out. The boys were showing out tonight, man. What a, what a fun fun evening. No, they absolutely were. And I mean, obviously, you know, Niederbach had a nice goal. Uh, so did Donovan Sabrango with Team Canada. But the guy you really want to focus on is. First overall 2021 pick, or not first overall, first round 2021 pick, sixth overall in Simon Edvinson with Team Canada. And I made a comparison on Friday or Thursday's episode, and I was like, I don't want to make this comparison, but he's been drawing, you know, drawing rumors, or he has been drawing comparables. And Tony Ferrari was immediately like, you don't want to make that comparison, but people have been saying it for a reason. Simon Edvinson looks more at Cider esque. Like watching that game today. Uh, that Team Sweden played against Russia. Simon Evanson, with his size, is an what incredibly... A game, sp- what a game. He had an incredibly smooth stride. He had a breakaway. The defenseman had a breakaway goal because he had an enormous reach. So he was poking the puck up along the boards while he himself was on the other side of the player, two players. And then he just poked it around them both times while he's on the other side. And he just chipped it ahead of himself, skated on the ice and scored a goal. And his stride is just so incredibly smooth. He had some really d- d- just no look breakout passes, like backhanders, and, and while on and with guys on him in the corner. Simon Edmondson, dare I say, looks NHL ready. I mean, he just looks. He looks like Moritz Sider, and Tony Ferrari said it. He looks just like Moritz Sider did, and Moritz Sider is draft plus one year, like. Simon Evanson just looks, he's dominating. Him and Jesper Walsta, Team Sweden, dominating. He looked phenomenal. And I think the the biggest thing for a lot of people was when he 
got out there and started moving around. He's a big boy. Oh like, yeah, he bigger is, than Cider, I think. He is a big dude, and like I, I don't, I don't know if that ever. I mean, you know, every everybody can look up his his height and weight and stuff, but until you see him on the ice, like, like I, I don't, I don't know if everybody really grasped how big of a dude he is, man. And 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 you're right. I think the the most fascinating part was that with his size and you see him go out there for the first couple of minutes, you're like, damn, this is a big dude. He then starts skating and like, he's agile. Like he, he is a, he is an athletic, like agile dude. That is a, that, that looks like a tower out there. And then that's exactly why, again, you said a defenseman at a breakaway goal. Um, and he, I mean, he looked fantastic. He looked on, he had one mistake where he was trying to clear the puck and ex- accidentally like pretty much gave up a goal by himself. Um, but that honestly, that one was this, this might, I, I guess this is locked on Red Wings were allowed to be biased. I, I don't think that was really, that was more of a fluke thing than anything. You know what I mean? I don't think that was yeah. like a big, he made a mistake. He's not going to do that like all the time. A, Right. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't even take it as like a like a low IQ move or like a dumb play. I think it was just like flukes happen sometime and it was just kind of a fluky play. Like as a whole, he looked absolutely phenomenal. And it was definitely the highlight, especially with with Kosa, for whatever reason, getting scratched from Canada's start. Uh, Edmondson I, was was certainly the the highlight and the pinnacle of the day, which is really saying something considering how good a few other players look too. And it really wasn't just Edvinson. I mean, we had, we had several dudes look great and, but uh, I don't think anyone looked better than him. Yeah. So the Costa thing is interesting. I'm glad you brought that up because when that happened, I was like, wait, why did he get scratched? And knowing that earlier in the, in the exhibition games, before the games mattered, they played an exhibition game and he let in three goals on 11 shots. And apparently they decided that was enough. They needed to see out of Costa. And so they scratched him from tonight's game against the, I don't want to say Czech Republic. What do they call themselves now? Czechia? Czechnia? Czech, I have to, Czech, Czechia? I don't know. I have to learn how to pronounce that. I have, all, on all honesty, I've not looked into it. I just saw they changed it. I'm like, I, there's a Z in there. I don't know. Um, but they scratched him despite him being a first round draft pick, the highest goalie taken in the draft because of that. And I mean, I'm asking, I asked in the group chat, I'm like, is it really because of those three goals? And the guys are like, yeah, it's because Canada constantly does this with their top 10. Like, like you're talking to the team that, sat Gretzky out during a, a, a five player shootout in the Olympics. And it's like, they, they just kept citing these receipts of these players, just not playing um, at four team Canada. You know, they had Bedard starting on the, the bottom six forwards. And that, before they finally moved them up in the second half of the game, it's just, I, I don't know why team Canada would take Sebastian Kosa off one bad game in exhibition hockey and decide, let's scratch them all together. And now they're, granted, they're up 5-3 to three currently after two Owen Power goals. Does he have a hat-trick in this game? He does. Owen Power is a hat-trick for Team Canada. Um, but th- it means a 5-3 game, and uh, Czechia was playing very close with Team Canada this entire game. It's currently 32 shots to 30 in favor of Canada. You you would think that Sebastian Kosa would be able to make a few more of those saves. In fact, you saw it all over all over Twitter. Every single time Team Canada let in a goal, they're like, Costa would have Costa would have made that save. <laughs> I mean, he is the best goalie on their roster. And off of one bad exhibition game, Team Canada decided they were going to scratch him from the first exhibition game. And it might work out in their favor, and then they might still get the win, but it seems very short sighted. And one hell of a way to crush a kid's confidence. Yeah, I it, I mean it makes no sense, right? I mean, like, even like bias aside. It's it's preposterous. I, I I don't understand. There, there's there's very little justification to what they did, and and I, I mean it's Team Canada. Like they'll be fine, but I hope I, they're not. I, I, right, like you know. Hope they and, suffer. And it's of it's it. just you know we saw we saw the uh, the game uh, earlier today. That was uh, that was Wallstedt versus Askarov. Right. Astral and it was bad. And, and it, well, yeah, man, he's got everybody point like he's great, but he just, he has such a weak grip on the stick that, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what happened today. Like, anyway, that's a whole different sidebar. But like, we, <laughs> we, we had like that goal, right? We had, we had uh, the two of the best 
goaltending prospects in the entire world going at it uh, or earlier today. And then we get to team Canada and it's like, okay, this, this is, you know, the, the pinnacle, this is team Canada and Costa doesn't play. It was, it was very disappointing. And I, I have a hard time just justifying it on, on really any level. I bet you they're still going to trot Askarov out there in the next game, Team Russia, even though he had a bad game today, because he's your starter. He's your best goalie. You don't scratch him. It just makes it, again, bias aside, it makes no sense. He had one bad exhibition game. The games matter now, so why would you scratch your best goalie and kill his confidence before he realistically even had a chance to show his stuff? The exhibition game, again, didn't matter. It's just stupid all the way around. But... We have like another week's worth of World Junior Championship games. Obviously, in the long run, I'm rooting for Team USA, but Team Sweden's my backup because Simon Edmondson, baby. He's yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm Team USA first, and then you better be. Uh, after that, it's it's w- whatever team has the most Red Wings prospects on it remaining in the uh, in the tourney. Is it bad that even though Kosa and Sabrongo are on? Team Canada, I don't want Team Canada to win. I just, I can't stand it. No, they're they're so mean, high like, and mighty. See, but the thing is, like, no matter how badly you don't want Team Canada to win, they're they're gonna they're gonna go pretty far. So, like, I, I've just decided I'm not gonna root against them anymore because there's no point. Because no, my my rooting against them will not cause them to lose games. Fair enough. Um, any final thoughts? Um. I mean, go blue. It's almost there it is. time. You know, and, you forgot uh, to say that on Thursday's episode. Did I really? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we had Tony on. I was yeah. distracted by the by the beautifulness. Yeah, go blue. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, respect women in sports, as we talked about earlier, and go blue, baby. There we go. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen to Lockdown Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Lockdown Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. We'll be back with, I'll be back with you guys tomorrow with another episode, of course, because, as always, it's your team every day. Same time, same place. I got that wrong. That was just bad, man. That, 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 was, that was rough. What are you doing? I'm leaving it. You know what? Every day. Every day.